Hi guys, so this week we have come to Burfield Gold Lake where Harry, Lewis and myself are having a bit of a social session. It's not very often that all three of us can meet up. In fact, this is the first time all three of us have fished together in absolutely ages. So we are really looking forward to this. So now we are in the middle of May and this is the first bit of decent weather, warm weather, we've had in a long time. And hopefully that really is gonna kick the carp off and they're gonna have a bit of a feed. It's looking good for it. So we've already had a few laps of the pool. There's a couple of swims I think we all quite fancy, but we're gonna have another couple of laps, then do a draw for swims. Okay, so we've had a bit of a walk round and there's kind of two swims that we think are pretty obvious to go in and then basically the whole of the rest of the lake. So we all kind of want those two swims between us. We're gonna pick some sticks. I think the longest stick wins. Longest stick wins. Longest stick wins. And yeah, so longest stick gets first choice and so forth. So Lewis can go first because he's my boss. Now, you wouldn't put it in order, shortest to longest or shortest to longest. <laughs> come on, Lou, just pick it. You're long in this out. Oh, come on. Oh, that's, that's the longest one. That's yeah, the longest one, 100%. That the one? 100%. <laughs> 100%. This is going to be the shortest. Oh. oh. And that's the medium one. There you go. Is it? Yeah. It really? Yeah, OK. Oh. <laughs> that's the first time you've ever lost a draw in your life. No, I have lost a few. Have you? Uh, yeah, I normally do pretty well on a lose draw, yeah. so. Where are you thinking, Emily? Uh, I'll probably go in this in here. So Lewis is going into Stuffed Full of Fish Bay. <laughs> yeah. And Mark, you'll go into Stuffed Full of Fish Bay too. Yeah. And I've got the pick of the rest of the lake, so let's get going. Okay, so because I came out last in the draw and there were sort of already two swims that were nailed on with fish in them, um, I'm just sort of coming around and having a bit of a look really. I'm going to take my time. I'm not in any rush. And, you know, we haven't seen rakes of fish in, in the other two swims. There's going to be fish elsewhere in the lake. So I'm just going to take my time, look in sort of the, uh, the, the corners, under the bushes, that sort of thing. and. I'm sure I'm going to find some fish that I can fish for later. Well, here I am in my swim, and I'm pretty happy with where I've got. I came second out the draw, and I've got my second choice swim. There are so many options here to go at, though. You've got a reed bed over on the far side. You've got lots of overhanging branches as you have all around the lake. But there's lots of clear spots as a fish. Bosh! Yeah, you've got so many places you could put a rod. And at the moment, I'm quite happy just to sit here and see where the fish are showing, because I have seen quite a lot of fish showing. In fact, as soon as we kind of stepped foot on the lake, a fish crashed out. But they're sort of showing here and there and everywhere at the moment, it's not in any one specific location so at the moment I'm just kind of just, just watching seeing what's happening before I commit my rods to any spots luckily I've come out first in the draw which means I'm going to get my first pick of swim I've picked a swim that covers this bay over my shoulder it's an out-of-bounds bay it's got snags, it's got lily pads in it, and there's fish evident in the bay just chilling out in the daytime. I can't fish right up here, it's out of bounds. So I'm gonna fish as close as I can that's safe, just with one rod covering this area. And I'm gonna put second rod on the mouth, on the, opposite, on the opposite bank as the fish come in and out of the bay. So I'm only gonna fish with two rods. I think with a swim like I've chosen, less is gonna be more.
Okay, so whilst the other guys are getting sorted, I've done my first lap round, sort of identified a few areas that look sort of interesting to me. I have seen a couple of fish um, in, in one sort of snaggy corner. Um, and also this bay looks quite nice. It's sort of a, a fairly large-ish bay for the size of the lake. Um, that doesn't have any swims in the back of it. So yeah, there's plenty of clear spots. I've been up the tree and there's plenty of clear spots. So I'm just gonna put a, a little bit of bait, a bit of sweet corn and a little bit of 10 mil live system just on those clear spots. And I'm just gonna check them um, sort of throughout the day. I still haven't quite decided on, on what I'm gonna do. Um, and yeah, hopefully, something will get their heads down on one of these and it'll give me give me an opportunity if if nothing does happen on these spots i think i'll probably go for a bit more of an open water approach both of the other guys fishing in little bays will be fishing close in so um yeah for the first night anyway maybe i'll do that but we'll see if this works first So on the gold pool, fishing is only allowed from the designated swims and there's no stalking allowed. But on the opposite bank to where I'm plotted up, there's a little gap in the bushes and underneath these overhanging trees in front of me, there's a really clean, polished off area. And I've just been stood and I've been watching the carp drifting over it backwards and forwards. There's a lot of fish moving in and around here. Now. I could try and drill a solid PVA bag through the branches from where I'm plotted up over there, but there's a better and more discreet way of placing the rig over here. So what I have done, I have cast a bare lead through the gap in these, in these bushes and these branches. I've just walked around on the opposite side, got the bare lead here. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to attach um, a solid PVA bag. I'm just going to gently swing in the solid bag right on top of this spot where the fish keep visiting. So that's what we're going to do right now. So I have, after walking round a lot, <laughs> a lot, a lot, um, and baiting a few spots, there is now a couple of fish just dropping down on one of my spots. It's like a little sort of tree-lined, snaggy-ish margin, um, quite, quite deep, um, probably about four foot deep, and up a tree I can see a nice glowing spot and put a few few live system, few bits of corn on there, and yeah, they are sort of ghostly, about two, maybe three fish at, at max, but it's an opportunity. And whilst I don't know how many other opportunities I'm gonna get today, I might as well make hay whilst the sun shines and, and have a go down here. So I'm gonna put together a rig and uh, get in place. Okay, so this is the spot, the sort of tree line goes off down there and I've, I've fed just here. And it's a tricky cast, it's underneath basically the overhanging trees. So the only way that I'm gonna be able to get this in place is I've got a baiting pole here. I'm gonna ship it out and cast over it, bring it back in, put the rig in the, uh, in the spoon and then drop it onto the spot and, and that's the only way that I'm gonna 
going to be able to sort of get a rig in. You, you're not allowed to fish from um, non-designated swims. I mean, this would be a wicked little stalking spot, but as it is, fishing from there down here, it's perfectly safe, and I can literally see them feeding there now. So I'm, I'm proper excited, and yeah, let's just get it shipped out slowly. So I've now got my rods out. <clears throat> a little bit of a change from my original plan. I've put three rods out in the end. Uh, once I got back into the swim, got my rods that are covering the bay sorted. There's a lot of water to my left really that wasn't being fished. So I've decided to have a little plumb about with a marker float. It's quite weedy, but I found a nice little clear spot, not far out at all. Um, it's about eight or nine foot and I've put a solid bag there. The, uh, the, the rod down my right hand margin, which is the one nearest the bay, I've used a baiting pole. Uh, I've done a, uh, I've had to flick a, walk down the bank, flick a spom out, cast a bare lead over the spom, walk down the margin, reel the spom in, bring the rig, uh, the lead back to the bank, attach my rig, drop it into a baiting pole, ship it out and drop it, and I can see the clear spot I'm dropping it on. Um, it takes a bit of effort to do it, but you know it's 100% right, and you know, there's fish over 40 pound in this lake, so it's well worth the effort, because if we catch one of them, I'll be absolutely made up. I've used the baiting pole to put my, my middle rod out, which is over under an overhanging tree at the mouth of this bay. Again, um, you would struggle to cast there because the tree's uh, branches are hitting the surface of the water, so you can just ship the, the, the pole under and, and then drop the rig. Both the right hand and the middle rod are on um, fluorocarbon D-rigs with a couple of grains of plastic sweet corn on as hook baits. We're told there's a fair few crayfish and because I'm dropping in margin spots on gravel, crays do like uh, gravelly areas, so I'm gonna use the plastic corn to avoid the crayfish. But the rod that's in the open water, in the deeper water on silt, I've gone with a little eight mil Northern Special in the solid bag for that one. So, got all the rods out now. Evening's coming and uh, I don't think it'll be too long before one of the three of us has got the first fish of the trip because we've all got fish close to where we're fishing at the minute. So I've just got the second rod in place in exactly the same fashion as the first. Just cast a bare lead, um, drilled it through the, the gap in the bushes on the far side, it's landed on the bank, walked round, attached a, a lead-free leader uh, with a solid PVA bag, and then just uh, gently popped the rig in place, put a couple of uh, spoonfuls of, of bait over the top. So that's it, both the traps are set now. Fish is still in the area. While I was over there, I had, to, I had to wait for an opportunity to place a rig in the water because there was fish visiting both the spots. So I had to wait for them to drift out before I could put a rig in place. So I've done that without disturbing any of the fish. So hopefully, something will happen. Okay, so I've, uh, I've moved around now to the opposite corner to where I was fishing. I sort of gave it, probably gave it a good two and a half, three hours in there. And even though there was two or three fish sort of feeding, they weren't being really competitive. I feel like there needed to be a few more fish down there uh, for me to have a real chance. And it sort of 
faded out a little bit, but I'll put some more bait in there and I'll definitely check it again tomorrow. But for now, I've come around to this, this bay and you could sort of see it from over in the other swim and a couple of fish have been showing underneath a tree in this bay. I've probably seen two or three shows now and since I've come round I've actually seen a couple of fish just cruising in and out of the bay so um, for me this looks like my best chance uh, for, for tonight and, and tomorrow I'm going to get a few rigs sorted, get some bait prepped, maybe um, spot out a, a little bit of an area and then fish one down to the uh, left hand margin tonight and yeah we'll have to cross our fingers and see how it goes. Oh, daddy long legs. How are you? Hello. Hello. What's happening? What's occurring? Well, um, well, there's a few, there's a few fish about, I guess. I've, I've only, I've, I've literally just got my, uh, my second rod out. I'm only fishing two tonight. Are you really? I am, I am only fishing two. Are you, how many are you fishing? Two, yeah. Two. Have you got them on Sometimes single sticks? Have you got them on single sticks? Yeah, of course. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So Burfield. <laughs> <laughs> so Burfield. Showing? Uh, I've, I mean, well, earlier in this bay that I'm fishing, I've seen two or three show under a little bush that I've sort of flicked a rig down to. Yeah, so I'm feeling pretty confident on that rod actually, and I've just had a big, big liner on my right hand rod. Um, is that the liner that you struck at, or is it another liner? A separate liner from the one that I struck at earlier in the other swim, yeah. It feels quite daytimey yeah, to me. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm not really confident at all tonight, but um, I think tomorrow when the sun gets up, I think they'll be along that margin again. There's yeah. loads of fish there when we got here, loads. Yeah, are they still are they still fishing in Lewis's little bay? Um, I've seen one while I was stood with him, one sort of like head and shoulders at the back of the back of the bay. Well, the yeah, actually, I say the back of the bay, the entrance to the bay. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, there's still fish. There's still fish there. Yeah, definitely. I fancy Lewis and make a bite tonight down that channel. I think as they the come out. Yeah, the yeah. Bite. Yeah. So, well. But, I would very much like you to, to come and do some photos for me tomorrow, so let's hope that happens, and then I'd return yeah. the favour. Yes, let's hope so, let's hope so. Okay then you, well, cool. good luck for tonight, and uh, yeah, we'll keep it updated if anything happens. Yeah, good luck mate. Bye. You too, catch you later. Bye. Bye. Well, how about that for a battle-scarred warrior? Lovely, dumpy, linear carp. Yeah, definitely, definitely seen a few wars this one, but yeah, really, really cool fish. Was getting a few liners throughout the night and yeah, this fish came on the left-hand rod that was sort of flicked down the margins. I'd walk around and put a little bit of bait on it and yeah, about half an hour ago, it ripped off and uh, can't say that it fought very hard because it didn't. Um, but yeah, well happy to get off the mark with such a
cool old old fish and um, yeah what's even better is that I've heard on the group chat as well that Lewis has, has just had one as well so yeah a nice start for our first morning of the trip. Harry was playing his 27 pound linear. I was on the other bank playing this 19 pound linear. Absolute beautiful fish, angry male. It's got the spawning tubercles on it. Skin's all rough, really, really rucked. And uh, yeah, nice way to get off the mark on the first full morning. Came on the middle rod, a couple of grains of plastic corn over a variety of bait that I'm sure we'll talk about later on in the session. Well, good morning. Uh, nothing happened for me last night, which didn't come as a massive surprise, if I'm honest. I do feel like this area is more of a, a day by area. Um, I think the fish are moving up and down that far margin during the day when the sun's up and in the night, I get the idea they're pushing out more back into the main body of the lake and around that sort of area. Um, so while I've got these two rods angling now, I've just repositioned them. They're all set for the day ahead. I do feel like I need a bit of a, a backup area just in case they fail and I also feel like I need a spot for the night time. So I've just had a few casts around this, this fairly thick reed bed over on the other side there and there's a nice depth of water there. Um, it is a sort of area I do feel like the fish could go on the night time. So I just want to have a few more exploratory casts just to check that the, the, the bottom isn't uh, covered in debris or there is quite a lot of like mossy type weed down there, it's quite thick. So I just want to check that the area over there is nice and clear and I can present a rig on top of it. Right. It's gone down pretty soft. Lead's landed pretty soft. I feel like it's just landed over a bit of light weed. Nothing that will cause any problems or anything, but I would like it to go down on one of these these clean areas, a spot that I, I feel that fish are frequenting and feeding on. That was just sort of to the right of the little gap in the reeds. Let's go bank centre or a little bit left this time. Well, there's definitely fish in them reeds because as that lead landed, I just saw the reeds next to it go like that. <laughs> so there's definitely fish there. And that went down much firmer, much firmer. Bang in the centre with that gap in the reeds. Lead land went down with a nice crack. The reed behind it went like that as I spooked the fish. That's where this one's going. So I've just got this rod all rigged up, ready to go out up against those reeds. And while I'm using a solid PVA bag on the other two rods, I've gone for a lead clip arrangement here. Now the reason I'm doing that is with the solid bags, I can see the spots I'm fishing on. I can walk around, I can place them right hand, I can see they're gonna be on a nice clear area. Whereas with this, although I've had a few casts around and the lead has landed firm, that lead could still land firm if it's going through some light filamentous algae or a little bit of light debris on the bottom. So I don't know exactly what I'm fishing over. And for that reason, I, I want to use a, a hinge stiff rig. And obviously this wouldn't fit inside uh, 
the small confines of a, of a PVA bag. The reason for me using a hinge diff rig is if this should land over any debris, the hook point will be up and proud and still free to catch a hold in the carp's mouth. So I've only gone for a short, a short boom section there and that's tied up using 25 pound Camatex Soft. Like I said, it is, although the lead is landing firm, if it is landing over any debris, it's only light. There's no reason to use a big long boom. It's not like the lead's going through like a foot of weed or six inches of weed. It's, it is relatively clean, so I don't need to use a long boom section. And uh, likewise, the pop-up section itself, the stiff section there, that's only about an inch and a half. It doesn't need to be popped up high. It's only light, light debris. If anything down there, so it only needs to be a short uh, pop-up. Um, that's tied using doubled over 30 pound rigidity to create a really mega stiff section. In effect, it kind of creates an extension of the hook. That's kind of what it does. It makes it very hard for the carp to deal with. And the hook bite I'm using there is a washed out pink carp freaks pop up that's been soaked in the booster liquid for ages. And yeah, it's a, it's a setup I've got lots of confidence in using. So I'm just going to take the opportunity now to talk a bit about the bait that I've been feeding so far in this session. Uh, all of uh, the bait I've introduced so far has been via a baiting pole and it's literally just been a handful of bait around a rig to try and get a bite. I haven't been doing any spawning or filling it in, literally just enough bait to get a bite. My left hand rod's on a solid bag, I'm just chucking that around at showing fish and fizzers um, so there's no additional free bait going around that. The mix I'm using is pretty simple, there's just four ingredients, uh, all tried and trusted ingredients that I've got confidence in that I've used all over the UK and in Europe as well. Um, perfect for this, um, this type of venue where you're setting these little traps on a gravel spot, like a stalking scenario but from a swim because you're not actually allowed to stalk um, out of your swim on this particular lake. So going through it, first of all, put in some sweet corn. That's the first ingredient to go in. Nothing needs to be said about sweet corn. It's a, it's a classic bait that all carp love. Next, another classic hemp. This time of year, it mimics the little snails that are emerging around the weed and the gravel. Then I put some 10 mil boilies in. This is the triple X. Put some whole ones in. I also like to just from a few between my fingers into the mix as well. Not uh, trying to turn it into a fine crumb, just bits of boily really. Just trying to speed up the traction that's being leaked out of those baits. I've watched fish in snags many a time and they definitely respond to broken baits and chop baits quicker than they do a whole bait. Definitely seems to turn them on that extra traction being leaked out of the bait once it's crushed up. So a few more of those 10 mil triple X in. And then the final ingredient, is something that's a real edge, I believe, especially this time of year when bloodworm is in abundance in the lake. If you can put a concentrated area of bloodworm around your hook bait, I think it brings them in. So this is some of the frozen bloodworm that's now thawed out. Put a nice dollop of that in. It's a bit dirty, it makes your hands a bit sticky and messy, but we're fishermen, so we're used to it. Give it a good stir. Sort of an even split of uh, you know 25% corn, 25% hemp, 25% boiling, and 25% bloodworm, and that's the finished mix. Like I say, really simple, but you've got different sizes, different colours, obviously different flavours. You've got the natural attraction of the bloodworm. The hemp's also mimicking natural food in the little snails, and you've got the visual uh, aspect of the sweet corn, and obviously the boily again, highly attractive. 
Um, and at this time of year when the fish are packing on that weight, getting their energy levels up for spawning, a good high nu uh, nutritional, high quality boilie is what you want to be adding to your feed. So that's it, nice and simple. Like I said, just a handful going into the bait spoon, rigging the bait spoon, just enough to get a bite. And it's worked so far. So the day's kind of wearing on a little bit now. It's, it's about 11.30 and nothing else has happened. I wound in, I went and checked the, the snag over there and kind of surprisingly to me, the bait was still there and there wasn't anything in the snag, which was a bit disappointing because I thought that would have been guaranteed bites today or at least a bite. Um, at least a chance but the, yeah there's nothing in there at the moment maybe this afternoon they'll they'll get in there a little bit more so what i'm doing now is just introducing a bit of bait on an open water spot i um yeah saw quite a few fish showing this morning in open water not in any one particular area and whilst i haven't sort of dedicated any real time to the open water so far i thought i'd get the uh, get the leading rod out and find something now there's a lot of weed out there um, quite low-lying stuff but there is a lot of it out there and it was quite hard to find anything that sort of felt nice to fish on um, but I have now found a very very small little gravelly spot probably only enough for one rod and I'm just introducing some um, 10 and 15 mil live system to it. I, I probably would have put a bit of a, a bit of sweet corn in with this as well, but we saw quite a lot of bream show last night. Mark's had a tench and had a bream, and I just think the boily only approach is going to be the way. And um, yeah, I'll probably drop one, maybe two rods on this, or one rod on it, one rod just off to the side into the weed. And um, yeah sort of see how it goes hopefully they want a bit of bait because all we've been doing so far is just for f fishing for like a bite at a time setting little traps and um yeah i'm probably gonna put in about a kilo kilo and a half so let's see how it does So you may notice I am back in the little snaggy corner. I know I said not too long ago that it was devoid of fish, but since I've put that bait out, I've come back round and it's now got a couple of fish now sort of gliding over the spot and occasionally tipping down. So I think it's worth a go for the rest of the afternoon anyway, sort of into early evening. I think there could be a chance of, of a bite and maybe a few more might turn up, who knows. Um, I'm going for a slight different approach to what I did yesterday. I feel like I got mugged off yesterday. I think I should have caught one, but I didn't. So what I was using yesterday on that spot was um, a sort of pop-up that was cut down to sink under the weight of the hook. But I, I don't know, I feel like I needed something a little bit more subtle. So I've gone for a piece of plastic corn and that is just fished on the most the most basic of of hair rigs really with just a little piece of silicon trapping the hair I've got a size 6 barbless wide gate beat point hook 25 pound Camatex soft hook link um, which is really nice and strong which you need for fishing sort of snaggy situations like this I've got a 
standard leg clip, tail rubber onto a quick change swivel there, and I've got a four ounce uh, edges flat pair lead there and 23 pound Exocet mainline. Really, really strong, tough as old boots. Its abrasion resistance is ridiculous. Its knot strength is amazing. And I, I wouldn't use anything other than this in, in situations like this. Um, one thing I will say is when I ship that pole out, I'm not gonna keep the rig on and I'm not gonna keep this lead on. I'm gonna switch over to a smaller lead and then once I've chucked over and walked round, I'll clip on the uh, rig, I'll clip back on the four ounce lead, ship it back out, drop it on the spot and I'll be fishing. He's out. <laughs> Proper hit and hold. Locked up fishing, but he's well out now. I think this bite from this tree has been a long time coming. Obviously, I feel like I got mugged off a bit yesterday. Um, and uh, <laughs> yeah, to uh, finally get a bite from there. It's nice, just want to land it now. Um, <laughs> Brad, the cameraman, was up the tree and uh, he said it was a small one. <laughs> there were some, uh, well, there was at least one pretty big fish down there, but uh, this one looks like a nice common anyway. Line's caught round his peck, so he's coming in a bit funny. <laughs> Proper back end first, but he's in. Oh, happy days. That was, yeah, way overdue from those, those snags. Proper bit of exhilarating fishing. Rod's absolutely nailed it round. Proper hook and hold stuff. Oh, yeah, we got a nice common in the net. Wicked. Well, that was proper, proper exciting. And uh, despite Brad, the cameraman, keeping on telling me that there was five fish much bigger than this and probably one of the A-team as well feeding on that spot when I had this bite. Um, yeah, the sort of excitement and exhilaration is still the same when you get that bite and it absolutely hoops round and you've got to proper hold them to stop them getting in those snags. Yeah. Well, well happy and uh, yeah, makes all the sort of effort of baiting the spot and checking it this morning and checking it again this afternoon worthwhile. Well, the rod that I positioned really close to the reeds. Uh, has just slammed over. I've managed to get the fish out of the reeds without too much of a fuss. But after that, it's been nothing but drama. It snagged me up halfway in and it's just done the same again, just somewhere down this margin. Yeah, I think this is just in a bit of weed, a bit of pressure should get it moving. Come on. 
it's like mossy, mossy weed down this margin. It's really coarse, heavy duty. Once they get their heads in it, hard work to get them moving again. Is it moving? Not yeah. yet. I can see a bit of weed. I can see plenty of weed. I can't see, oh, it's moving now, yeah. it's moving now. Right, I'm just gonna get under all the weed. Is it in? I don't know, yeah. Well, don't Something's know in. There. Yeah? Yes, we yeah. have actually got one. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, 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 we can. We can, we can it's, hug. yeah. We can oh, hug now. Yes, there he is. Oh. <laughs> Didn't even yeah. know if the fish had gone in the net. Just netted a big ball of weed. At one point I thought I saw Finn, but I didn't want to get too excited. We've got one. Relief. Well, I have opened my Gold Lake account with this um, characterful uh, mirror of around, I don't know, how big? I'm not gonna weigh him, how big? What are you giving me for this one? 20. 20, any advance on 20? Brad? 20 pounds 20 pound 10, Harry? 22.4. 20, I'm going with 22.4. <laughs> so I've got 22 pound four of uh, Gold Lake Murakarp, and I'm absolutely over the moon with that. Change of tactics, it only took an hour to get the bite. It actually came out the reed surprisingly easy, but then snagged me up on something mid-water, then dived in a weed bed right at my feet. We landed a big ball of weed. Wasn't even sure if there was a fish on the end or not still, but there was, and this was a result. Absolutely made up. Well, I've literally just positioned that rod five minutes ago. Put it back out in the same spot that produced that, that mirror. And I'm playing another fish. Once again, it's trying its best to get in every weed bed it can. Yeah, it's trying to get in the same place. The last one weeded me up. Just got to give it a bit of stick away from them reeds surprisingly easy. Get that net under him. There we go. That's how you do it. Yay! Yes. Well done. Here's your fist. Thank you. Well here we are, the second fish in very quick succession. This one's a little bit bigger than the first one I caught, so probably around 23 pounds, something like that and it put up a really good account of itself. Give me a right tussle, getting it out the reeds, and then uh, dived in the same weed bed in the margin that the first fish lodged itself in. But thankfully everything held secure. I managed to land this really nice chunky mirror.
what a lovely end to a great day's fishing for us on the Gold Lake. Started off with me and Harry both having fish at first light this morning. Then uh, Mark got in on the action this afternoon. Harry uh, went and did some stalking from one of the other pegs opposite where he'd done the night and managed to fish as well. I'd had a very quiet day, so I rested my swim all afternoon, hoping that the fish would get back in the bay. Put the rod back out a couple of hours ago, had a tench, put it back out again, and then this was the result, another angry male. I think there's a, a few males getting into that bay, starting to uh, think about spawning and waiting for the big females to turn up. And uh, yeah, it rocked like mad, like the fish I had this morning. Beautiful, clean fish. Fell to two bits of plastic again on the D-rig, over the bait I spoke about earlier. And yeah, it's a great way to end the day. I'm gonna get her back and then try and put the rod back out in the, in the dark with the pole. Well, I really wasn't expecting a bite this sort of time in, in my area. Um, yeah, I was sort of waiting for first light, to be honest, but out of the blue, just as I sort of settled in for the, uh, for the night, this one rattled off, proper scrapped as well. He's an angry male with big fins and yeah, clearly, uh, clearly a bit of an attitude and yeah three fish so far going into tonight I'm absolutely buzzing with that to be fair wicked Well, what a great start to the morning that is. Shortly after first light, one of the rods that was fished tight to the reeds rattled off and we've got another 20 pound plus mirror. It's nice to get a fish so early on in the day as well because yesterday this area seemed pretty lifeless until the middle of the day. So to get one so early feels great and hopefully there may be another opportunity through the day as well. Let's see, but right now, I'm really chuffed just to have put another carp on the bank. Well, I just slipped that fish back, but before I get the rod back out, I just want to show you how I go about fishing in these snaggy situations. It really is important to use strong tackle that is up to the job of safely extracting the fish from these hit and hold situations. So if you first of all look at the line, the main line I'm using here is 23 pound Fox Exocet Transkarki. Now, I know it may seem excessive using a 23 pound line, but this has a diameter of just 0.40 millimeter. That's the same as most other 15 pound lines on the market, but with a breaking strain of 23 pound. Now, as well as being super strong, it's also practically invisible in water. 
and it also has fantastic abrasion resistance, which is exactly what you want when you're fishing around sharp or abrasive objects such as the reed stems over there. Now if we come down to that to the alarm, I have this set on the maximum sensitivity. As soon as a fish picks up that bait and goes to move away, I need to know about it. The quicker I know about a bite, the quicker I'm on the rod, the better chance I have of landing the fish. I'm also using a snag here. here. I am fishing on a slight angle. If a fish does go to the right, and I've got a snag here there to stop the rod from being pulled off the alarm. Coming down from that, I have a heavy bobbin. It really is important to fish with a, a tight line. I'm using a heavy bobbin to keep the line as tight as possible. And while we're talking about tight lines, in these situations, there really is no room for fishing with slack or semi-slack lines. When the fish does pick up the bait and goes to move away, I don't want any delay at all. I need to know about that bite as soon as it's happened. So it's important to fish with a tight line so that a bite is registered back as soon as possible. Okay. Now, if you come down to the reel, I'm fishing with a clutch completely locked up. You can't afford to give the fish an inch. If you give it an inch, it's gonna to want to take a yard and that yard might be too late. By then it could be in the snags and you've lost it. So it really is important to fish everything completely locked up I know it can be scary when the rod's hooped over and the fish is pulling away, but you really do have to give yourself the best possible chance of landing that fish. Now, coming down from the reel, I have the butt grips. Now, these are the Fox rod locks. These are a, a rubber grip that really do grip the butt section of that rod very securely indeed. There's no way that rod is going anywhere. So that is my snag fishing setup that has worked very well for me so far. Hooked three carp, landed all three, 100% success rate, can't argue with that. So it's a bit of a quiet one for me after that fish sort of just coming into the evening. And it's been a quiet one this morning as well. I've, I've not really seen anything sort of close to me, but the fish that I have seen have all sort of been over towards um, towards that sort of snaggy corner that I caught from yesterday and sort of progressively they've been getting, getting closer there so I think my best bet is just to um, wind in my rods now get round there get a rod in place and I'm, I'm almost certain that they'll be there feeding um, some point today so that's what I'm going to do. What's going on then? You've currently got three fish feeding about 18 inches from the rig <laughs> the bell ones as well. Oh really? How how actually no, I was gonna ask how how better, but don't tell me. <laughs> I've, um, literally as soon as you dropped it with the pole, one came out, sort of had a little scalp, went back into the bush and came out with his mates and they all just dropped at once. <laughs> um, and now they're sort of feeding at the back of the spot where you put that bigger spoonful and they're literally just grazing around the spot at the minute. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's going to be long, mate. I really don't. Oh, let's hope. Let's hope so. Ooh. Yeah, yeah that's one just brushed your line. I saw yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Did it, did it spook it, off? It didn't spook, but it uprighted itself and swam off back into the bush. Yeah, um, that's a problem with... There's with... three fish now, like, just at the back of that big pile of bait that you put in. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. By about three or four foot behind it, just scouting around at them little bits of corn that you put in the pole, I think. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it won't be long, but I'd definitely sit on your hand. It's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm within inches of the rod, so... Yeah, cool. All Sweet. Right. All right, cheers, mate. Alright, bye bye. So, having had that fish just on dark last night, I was really confident of some more action through the hours of darkness, or at least at first light this morning. Unfortunately, it hasn't happened. I got the rod back out down the channel on dark with the help of Alex and some head torches to sort of see where it was going. Got a few liners through the night, 
but this morning about five o'clock a coot picked me up on that rod and I had to redo it which wasn't ideal at that time of the morning. The other rods had the odd liner on but nothing nothing came from that either. On the left hand rod which is sort of in the open water in nine foot <coughs> depth of water I had the odd fish showing near that again this morning but I just don't think they're getting down in that deeper water. I think they're happier being up in the water and in the margins. When the guys have had the drones up, you can see the fish are spending a lot of time up in the water. With no zig rigs and no floater fishing allowed on this particular lake, it does have its limitations. We've got a few hours left before we head, head for home. So I'm gonna redo the rods. I'm gonna actually put two rods down the channel for the last few hours. I didn't really want to have two lines down there because it puts extra pressure on the fish, but there is the odd fish in that bay. So I'm gonna go all in two rods down there for those last few hours and see if I can't just get one more bite before I head for home. just in the throes of packing up and one of the rods over by the reeds. Just done it again. I'm out of breath. I really, I really wanted to be in the back, back of them reeds. So scary and exhilarating at the same time. You cannot give them an inch of line. All uh, that seems under control now. Well, we've come to the end of our 48 hour session here at Burfield Gold Pool. Lewis has got really bad knees, so he's having to sit cross legs and show his crotch to everyone. Oh, you, you were- I've, I've Yeah, the tail was covering my face, I Okay, felt. so, but yeah, I'm all packed away and uh, there was just the rods in the water and then they rattled off and we've got this, a fish to end the session with, really nice, dark, lean, old warrior of a common. So we're waiting for confirmation to see if it is indeed the actual Burfield common. Um, I'm not kind of holding out any hope, but you never know. <laughs> you never know. down a little bit after a hard winter. That, that's, a, that's a good possibity. But no, it's been, a, it's been a great session. We've had a lot of fun. And yeah, anything you'd like to add, guys? I'm doing I, all the talking I, here. I, well, I've, I, I've that's been completely mugged off in that corner. Yeah. Yeah, done. Right, done. Yeah. And yeah, Lewis, so that's it. any words? So How well are your knees? Uh, knees are good. Knees are good. Okay, so Lewis's knees are better. I've got a common. <laughs> Harry got mugged off. See you all next time. <laughs>